Ray Flores joined alongside by UFC Bantamweight Jeff Big Frog Curran. He battles Johnny Eduardo coming up UFC on Fuel TV, but he is here to corner his cousin in Pat Curran as he takes on Joe Warren for the Bellator Featherweight Championship. Jeff, thanks so much for your time. This is a fight that you guys have been looking forward to for quite a while as one of the precipice of this matchup. Your thoughts on Pat looking to take that Bellator Featherweight Championship? Just, you know, we're chomping at the bit. We're waiting for the day. Um, last week he said to me, he's like, I'm just excited and ready to be a world champ and, you know, encompass everything that goes with it. So I'm in the same boat. I'm just like, let's hurry up and get this party started. Now, I know that you could have been in Japan to corner Bart in his fight against Hatsu Hayoki, but instead you decided to remain here in the States and train Pat for his fight. Half the team went with Bart, and then half the team stayed here with Pat. Was that the whole entire game plan coming in? Uh, actually, no. It was kind of Bellator's fault, changing dates. They told us he was fighting on the 25th of February or the 26th or something like that. So we had to sit down and we decided that, you know, it's probably better I stay with Pat since uh, I've been with him through the uh, both tournaments. And, you know, we're comfortable together, obviously. Um, and, you know, Bart's game plan was fitting to Doug and our other coach, Brett. So we just decided you two go with Bart. You know, he's the veteran of the group. He's going to be okay regardless. And I'll stay back with Pat and go be a part of the team's first world title. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the date got moved, and then the, all the visas were purchased already, and the travel for Japan was already purchased, and it was spendy. So, you know, I had to actually, for the first time, sit and watch Bart on TV, which was pretty hard to do. I can imagine. Now, how important is this for, for your team? I mean, I know that you mentioned that this could be the first world title inside the Team Current Gym, and the Team Current Gym obviously has a long history and a great tradition, but how important is this fight for you guys? That's uh, really important. Uh, First of all, it proves to a lot of the other fighters that, you know, if you want to get something out of the sport, you better put in the time. And that's not just fight camp time. That's year-round, every day, developing your skills and, you know, pushing the, pushing the bar as far as getting better. So it makes a statement, but at the same time, I think it puts, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be Greg Jackson or, you know, I'm, try I'm trying to be this, huge fight factory like American Top Team, you know, they, they all have their thing. You know, we're a very small, built from the ground up deal, you know, out of my blood, sweat and tears and my coaches and my personal coaches and my instructors I trained and um, it's a family affair, obviously, like you'll see Friday. Um, so I, I'm very proud of where we are. It'd be nice to have that credential as well to kind of put us on that present day map instead of just having the veterans like myself and, and Bart, you know, out there trying to kind of struggle through the sport yet and, and career fighters, I guess you could say. So it's pretty inspiring. Well, I can imagine. Now, this is the second time Pat is fighting for a world title. What did he learn, and what are you telling him coming into a second title opportunity? He knows, we knew right after that fight what he needed to do if he fought Eddie again, whether or not he fought Eddie again was the question, and... Uh, now that it's Joe Warren, there's nothing different. We're just going to go out and let it rip and, you know, don't give him respect. And, you know, if he takes you down, he takes you down. And, you know, we deal with it then and just go fight him and not wait and not wait for a perfect opportunity. Just go mix it up and get in a fight. Now, we spoke with Joe earlier, and Joe said that as the later prong grounds progress, that he can go ahead. He's going to take Pat into deep waters, and he feels that Pat doesn't like going into those championship rounds. Your thoughts? Um, if I remember correctly, I think Pat won the fifth round against Eddie. I think that's one round Pat won. One of the rounds Pat won, or close to. So, I mean, there's no way to really tell that. Pat's always done great in the later rounds. So, you know, he's just giving himself his own little pep talk there. Now, Scott Jorgensen, a man that you know very well, you lost to him inside the octagon, is going to be cornering one Joe Warren. You're going to be cornering Pat. Any rivalry beginning to develop between both teams? Um, not really for me, but, you know, I guess they, they think they're going to sweep Team Curran and, you know, put that notch in their belt. And you know, part of me is like, hey, you know, at least I'm at that level where people care about that. But uh, it's a separate fight. I mean, whether not they're in each other's corners or I'm in Pat's corner. It's it's Joe and Pat. It has nothing to do with me and Scott. Me and Scott put on the best fight we could. You know, he fought the safest way he could and, you know, pulled off the win. I fought the best I could against his wrestling and, you know, the cards fell where they fell and 
No, no rivalry. I mean, I don't care. I'm I'm past that stage in this sport, but I do. I definitely, you know, I definitely feel like um, I hope the respect is mutual. You know, it's just a fight, and you know. Now you have some business to attend to as you take on Johnny Eduardo coming up in a, a, the next couple of months. Give us your take on on finding Eduardo. This is a big fight for you. You know, if you were to lose this fight, you'd be 0-2. How important is this fight in the career of one Jeff Kern? If I lose this fight, I'm 0-3 <laughs> in the UFC. I did no, I had, but, oh, in, in your recent run. In my recent re in my recent run, yeah. Uh, it's been pretty made clear that I, you know, going into the Jorgensen fight, as hard as it was to get back to the UFC, you know the past couple of years I kind of figured one loss and I was done so you know I told people I'm probably going to be done because I have a team of guys I got to focus on if I'm not going to become the best in the world and get get what I feel I want to achieve then I want to help other people do that um, so I wanted to make that decision and then I fought a good fight they were happy with me and um, you know they invited me back so it's kind of like I'm back in that same boat you know, if I lose the fight and I get cut then one half, literally 50, 50, 50. One half of me wants to just become the best coach I can be and focus on my school and my team and my students and all that and my, you know, a little more time with my family and stuff. And then the other half of me wants to say, all right, free agent, I'll fight anywhere, anytime, and just keep going. And you still have the itch to fight. Yeah, I mean, I'm a fighter. I mean, I don't, I don't want to give up and stuff like that. But I'm a fighter with a lot more responsibility than than most fighters. Well, certainly not. Give us a prediction for the fight between Pat Curran and Jill Warren Bellator Featherweight Championship this Friday. Pat's going Pat's gonna to overwhelm him in one way or the other. He's going to put him away. Jeff, thanks so much for your time. Good yes, luck sir. on your fight against Johnny Eduardo, and also good luck to Pat and the entire team as Team Curran looks to bring their first championship to the gym and go ahead and put that mantle on in the Team Curran gym. Jeff Curran joining us.